The Parade by George Leffert. You are Mrs. Sid Ryan? The same. My name is Lucia. I'm a Martian. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Lip. What was that again? A Martian. A Martian, huh? As in Orson Wells? Precisely. I'm a Rotarian myself. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, now that we've had our little joke, Mr. Lucia, what can publicity associates do for you? It has been my observation that advertising and publicity are the very backbone of civilization. Spoken like a true Martian, Mr. Lucia. Now, if you'll tell me the name of the client. The client, of course, will be the Martian. <laughs> you don't give up, do you? Give up? The gag, I mean. All of us. Oh, yes, Mr. Ryan? This is Mr. Lucia. Uh, Mr. Do, Lucia sir. claims to be a Martian. Take him outside, will you, Oliver? Get the name of the sanatorium he escaped from and tell them to bring the butterfly net. Wait, sir. I'm happy to see, Mr. Ryan, that my telling you I'm a Martian has approximately the effect I supposed it would have. I believe we can do business. I have here the cash retainer of $5,000. Five thousand. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Lucia. And, uh, Oliver, get the client a cigar. Uh, no, 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 no. The other one, the other one. Thank you. No. Uh, well, now, uh, what can I do for you, sir? I wish you to manage a publicity campaign. A very large. A very important campaign. Is the product established, or is it something brand new? Oh, something quite new. Now, what would you judge to be the most effective type of campaign? Well, if the client has a lot of dough to throw around, the suspense campaign is best. First, you place ads in the paper saying, watch this space. Then, about a week later, you run an ad saying XYZ or PDQ, and you get people guessing what it means. Then, finally, when you've teased them enough, you bust loose and unveil the box. Excellent. Very well, sir. We shall conduct a suspense campaign. Of course, in this kind of campaign, secrecy is very important. Once the name of the product leaks out, it spreads like wildfire, and the whole campaign is cut flat off. Yes, quite so, quite so. Utmost secrecy. That's right. Uh, you realize, of course, these things cost like crazy. Would say one million dollars cover the expense? Yes. Come again? I said with one million dollars covered. <laughs> yes, I imagine. Uh, you did say one million dollars. I understood that you had handled some very large accounts. Of course, if this is too big. Oh, not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I seldom touch anything less. Uh, right, Oliver? Huh? Oh, 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 of course. That's right, Mr. Ryan. Absolutely right. Good. You will begin then by saturating the newspapers, the radio, the car, the very simple statement. What's that? I should wreck it for you. The Martians are coming. <laughs> Say, that's not a bad teaser. Got that, Oliver? Yes, sir. The next ad will read, June 1st is Martian Day. June 1st is Martian Day. What happens on June 1st? The parade takes place. What parade? I wish you to arrange a parade up Fifth Avenue. You mean like the uh, Macy parade? Exactly. Except that the theme will be the world of tomorrow. The Martian world. Uh, my client would like it to be a, a gay affair. Balloons, clowns, pennants, pretty drum major X. Hey, that sounds terrific. I might be able to interest the department stores in a tie-in. The uh, parade will climax the campaign. On June 1st, the product will be unveiled. Good enough. Uh, by the way, Mr. Lucia, just what is the product? Uh, what are we selling? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Ryan. Secrecy, remember. Oh, but that's all. Oh, we'll be revealed to you in good time, Mr. Ryan. For the moment, let us say, we are selling a concept. A uh, concept? Precisely. The concept of invasion from Mars. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, Benny Marcus, please. This is Benny. Uh, Benny, this is Sid Ryan over at Publicity Associates. Listen, Benny, how you fix the midgets? I got midgets. Fine. I need 40 midgets for a parade. 40. June 1st. And listen, Benny, I want them dressed in little space suits. Huh? You know, like men from Mars. Okay? Midgets. And I want some movie extras, uh, maybe 50 of them. Also rigged up like men from Mars. Make them look gruesome. Come back. Gruesome. Also, I need some horses with uh, pretty girls on top of them. Maybe you can get that bus from Maroney's Traveling Circus. The ones we booked for the Fireman's Parade in Albany last year. Uh, all right, sir. And never mind the expense. Just get me the talent, okay? I, uh, I, I gotta hang up now. Uh, call me back, Benny. I do it, Alba. Oh, fine, Mr. Ryan. Just fine. We got full-page ads in all the dailies and 10-second spot announcements on every local station. <laughs> uh, it's costing a fortune. The more it costs, the bigger our percentage. Spend like you are going to the electric here, eh, Oliver. Yes, sir. Uh, how are you making out on the parade? If it comes off, it'll be the biggest thing since Barnum invented the midget. I've got Macy's, Gimbals, and Sacks to contribute floats. Everything is built around the Martian thing, see? Even horses will have long feelers attached to them and uh, funny-looking extra legs. It'll be sensational. Oh, yeah, yeah, it sounds fine, only, uh... Only what? Well, Mr. Ryan, we don't even know what we're selling. <laughs> Oliver, my boy, you think old Sid Ryan has been sitting here spending all this moolah and not putting two and two together? You mean you know who Lushar represents? Just by accident, understand? I have learned that Century Pictures is making a big new epic. A space opera entitled Invasion from Mars. Get it? Oh, oh, I begin to see. Uh, also, by mere coincidence, it happens to be the premiere sometime around June 1st. You follow me? But Mr. Ryan, Century has an exclusive contract with New Features Syndicate for all their publicity. Suppose Century Pictures doesn't like the way New Features is handling their stuff. They want to get out of the contract, but New Features says no. So they have to get around the contract. A man named Lucia, client unknown, starts publicizing the Martian invasion. Need I go further? Oh, I get it, Mr. Ryan. Gee... I suppose I should have thought of that. No, Oliver, that's what I like about you. You're so innocent. Uh, let me talk to Commissioner Patrick, please. Sid Ryan. Hello? Commissioner? Sid Ryan. Oh, it's you. <laughs> well, what is it this time? If you want to drop a man off the Empire State Building into a teacup full of water, the answer is no. <laughs> You know I don't handle fan dances. I want a permit for a parade, June 1st, 5th Avenue. It's a Sunday. There's no traffic. Oh, come now. Look, Ryan. Macy's gets a permit. Gimbel's gets a permit. The American Legion gets a permit. The Sons of Aaron march every time Morton Downey sings the word in the green. Don't give me a hard time, Patrick. This is too big. Come on, I have now. the 5th Avenue Merchants Association behind me. Okay, Ryan. Fill out the forms. I'll pass them along to the license commissioner. That's my boy. Oh, by the way, what's the occasion? Oh, don't you read the papers, Patrick? June 1st is Martian Day. Well, Mr. Ryan, how is the campaign going? Like fire, Mr. Lushar, like fire. Everybody and his brother is going along with the gang. Yesterday, we distributed 60,000 Martian hats to school kids. I even arranged for Commissioner Patrick to accept a $50,000 check for the Policeman's Benevolent Fund from the man from Mars. I, um, I understand Century Pictures spend over a million bucks making that space opera. I beg pardon? Oh, come, come, Mr. Lucia. Sid Ryan wasn't born yesterday, you know. I know who our client is, even if you don't admit it. You do? Always thinking that's me. Well, as long as you know, let's keep it to ourselves, shall we, Mr. Ryan? As you once remarked, when these things leak out, it destroys the surprise and ruins the effectiveness of the campaign. Have word from Charles Brown at the Central Park Mall that the Martians have landed from big pink balloons. 
And uh, while we're waiting here for the arrival of the parade, we brought some people up to our microphone to tell you their reaction to this spectacular affair. Uh, what's your name, ma'am? Miss Jackson. A little out of please. Miss Ada Jackson. And uh, where are you from, Miss Jackson? Hello. Columbus, Ohio. I see. Mama. I see you have your family with you. Two little curly-headed boys. Uh, are you in New York for your vacation? Yeah, we came for the Shriners Convention with their daddy. Well, uh, Mama, Mama, what do you think of Martin Day, Mrs. Shackley? Well, it all seemed very strange to me, but the boys have been texting me to watch it, so we've been standing here for two hours. I can't make head or tail of it. Well, neither can a lot of other people, Mrs. Shackley, but judging by the thousands here already, there's a lot of curiosity. Curiosity killed a cat. Mama. Let's hope not. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Shackley. And now, here's... here they come, ladies and gentlemen. The first unit of the big marching parade, swinging down to the staff. Man fair, colored streamers, music, confetti, float. There's a tonic blaster. Another has a placard reading, We're marching through Georgia. And here come the clowns, laughing and falling all over. They're giving free sugar candy to the kids along the way. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there's a happy, laughing crowd along Fifth Avenue today. A cool reflection of a great sense of humor and good nature that makes America the place it is. Why, only... Oh, what's this? The crowd's murmuring now. They've fallen somewhat silent. Something coming. I'll try to get it for you. What? Uh, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the marching band. This is Thomas, the playmate of the show. And now a great hush has fallen over the crowd. It's quite a sight to see these thousands of people standing here expectantly, hearing only the great regular sigh of their mass breathing. And now here they come, ladies and gentlemen. The Martians, marching in booted, helmeted ranks, row after row. This is an impressive sight, ladies and gentlemen. A rather serious contrast with the rest of these. The boy of slapstick parade we've been witnessing up and now. Perhaps this old 200 tall, broad chested men dressed in metallic gray space suits with thick glass prizes drawn across their faces. The one's holding an ominous looking ray gun at the ready position. And marching in absolute silence. Taking steps perfectly as though some unspoken command is marking down for them. Even the children are awed by the unexpected warlike realism of the Martian leader. The first ranks of the Martians move past us, down to the second, toward the reviewing stands at the square. No one moves. <laughs> a woman, a woman, ladies and gentlemen, just dashed out into the street. For what reason, I don't know. She just slipped through the police court and somehow. They're after her now, but she's already reached the ranks of the Martians. She's trying to lift the visor of one of the Martians' faces. Wait, wait. She screamed and then fell forward in a dead faint. The Martian column keeps right on coming. Unless they break ranks, they're going to trample her. No, no, no. The police the policemen have got her now. They're dragging her away. Out of the way. They're trying to revive her now. Uh, all sorts of rumors have begun filtering back through the crowd. For some reason whispering it's a woman's head. We don't know yet, but whatever's happened, the incident seems to cast a slight shadow over the mood of the crowd. The carefree holiday has seems to have vanished. The crowd staring uneasily. A little disturbed at what we've just seen. Nothing to be alarmed at, however. It just, it just seems a shame that anything like this should happen to spoil our enjoyment of the Martian parade. I'm well aware of that, Oliver, since I paid her 50 bucks to do it. What? The dramatic moment, Oliver, the stock and train of the good publicity man. Relax. Holy smokes, you should think of everything. For my share of this deal, roughly $100,000, I can afford to think of everything. Shut the window. Okay, but don't you want to see the finish? We'll get out of the reviewing stand for the finish. Right now, I want to make a phone call. Uh, by the way, where's Lucia? I haven't seen it. Well, uh, close the window, Oliver. Well, I... Okay, Mr. Ryan. Ding, the
What is it? See, don't you know I couldn't get you a single movie extra? There's a studio strike in New York. Huh? Wait a minute. Now, where'd these guys come from if you didn't hire them? I don't know. Hold on. Oliver. Oh, yes, Mr. Ryan. Did you hire those motions? Well, no, sir. I didn't. Any... This is on the level, isn't it? Oh, I see. I... Okay, Benny, I'll, I'll call you back. What's the matter, Mr. Ryan? I don't know. Just don't know. Wonderful shot. What's the um, century picture number? Tremaine 4, 1000. Tremaine 4, 1000. Century pictures is getting old star. Uh, give me Marty Sandsman, your publicity director. Well, no, please. Uh, Marty, this is Sid Ryan. Oh, hello, Sid. Fine, fine. Listen, Marty, this is dead serious. On the level, get it? What's wrong? I've got to locate Lucia. Hello? Uh, Lucia, come on now, Marty. This is life and death. The guy you sent over to hire me for the invasion picture. I've heard of the guy named Lucia. And, uh, what invasion picture? Invasion from Mars, the space opera. Are you batty? Marty. The picture was shelled last month. What? Sure, back in the can. The big shots decided you can't sell a Martian invasion to the American public. Too incredible, Sid. <laughs> Whoever believed it could really happen. I'm all the Mother in heaven. What is it, Mr. Ryan? You look terrible. Fantastic. Mr. Ryan, is something wrong? Open that window. I, I want another look at those marshes. Look at them. Oliver, you were in the Army. Could 150 movie extras learn to march like that in, say, uh, 24 hours? No. Not in 24 days, Mr. Ryan. A second limitation. Not one out of step. The way they carry those ray guns at the rest. The only other time I've seen troops march like that was a film of the Nazi SS troops marching through the streets of Paris. Mr. Ryan. Oliver, get down there. Find that woman who painted. Her name's Gloria Martinez. Get her up here. Make it fast. Restrain him. Restrain him, you stinking murderer. Now, now, Mr. 
as I collect yourself. After all our planning, it wouldn't do to have everything spoiled now, would it? Lucia, I'll start talking and talk fast, because when you get through, I'm going to take you apart piece by piece. What's this all about? Surely you know, Mr. Ryan. After all, you've been publicizing it for months. You see, before colonizing your planet, the Martian government sent some of us as scouts in advance, disguised as Earthmen, of course, to study your habits, your weaknesses. We found that the people on Earth are predominantly conditioned by advertising and publicity. And so we conceived the idea of treating our entire invasion as a vast publicity stunt. <laughs> Clever, yes. After all, Mr. Ryan, who would suspect an invader who advertised his invasion in the newspaper, invited the public to be surprised attack? spend millions publicizing his plan. Holy jumpy. You've done very well, you see. Then there was no product. Ah, but there is the product. The product is death. What are you trying, Lucia? We Martians are humane people, Mr. Ryan. We do not like to destroy thousands where a few hundred will suffice. In exactly two minutes, our troops will treat the world to a spectacle of death, which will bring the rest of your planet to its knees in honor. Nations will clamor to surrender. Perhaps, Mr. Lucia, but not if I can have it. Sir, please. Operators, Mr. Ryan. Get me the field telephone on the reviewing stand of the Martian Day Parade. Hurry. Anyone in the Just hurry. Doesn't matter. 